The Heartbreaking Case of Mark Winger Hey everyone, today we're diving into a truly shocking case from the late 1980s. It's a story that starts off with a blind date and ends in a twist no one saw coming. Picture this, Mark Winger, a respected nuclear engineer, finds himself set up on a blind date with Donna, a hospital tech and co-worker of his brother. Sparks fly, chemistry ignites, and before they know it, their head over heels in love. Fast forward six months, and Mark pops the question. Donna says yes, and the stage is set for a fairy tale wedding. On March 4th, 1989, Mark and Donna exchange vows in a lavish ceremony, surrounded by their nearest and dearest. The newlyweds are on cloud nine as they begin their life together in sunny Florida. But the honeymoon phase doesn't last forever. A few years down the line, Mark and Donna decide to uproot and start fresh in Springfield, Illinois. They're focused on their careers and eager to start a family. But when they discover that Donna can't have children, it feels like a gut punch. Then, out of the blue, a ray of hope appears. While Donna's at work in the operating room, a doctor approaches her with an unbelievable proposition. A teenage mother is looking to give her baby up for adoption and the doctor thinks Donna and Mark would be perfect parents. It's a dream come true for the couple, and they don't hesitate to say yes. Little do they know, this decision will set off a chain of events that will rock their world to its core. Stay tuned as we unravel the mystery and uncover the shocking truth behind this seemingly perfect marriage. The decision was not made lightly as they recognize the immense responsibility and challenges that come with adoption. However, their love for children and desire to provide a loving home for a child in need outweighed any hesitations. Donna and Mark brought their newborn baby girl Bailey home from the hospital, and from the moment she arrived, Donna and the baby formed a strong bond. It was evident from the beginning that Donna's maternal instincts were in full swing, and she seemed to thrive as a mother. On the other hand, Mark was full of excitement and anticipation as he prepared for his new role as a father. Together, the Winger family appeared picture-perfect, resembling an all-American family with their loving and nurturing bond. To support Donna in her new role as a mother, her close friend Diane Schultz regularly stopped by to offer her assistance. Diane, whom Donna had befriended while working at the hospital, proved to be an invaluable source of support and guidance. She would often lend a hand in caring for Bailey, allowing Donna to take a much-needed break. In the summer of 1996, Donna and baby Bailey embarked on a journey to Florida to visit Donna's parents. Donna was eager to showcase her daughter and introduce her to her side of the family. To ensure a smooth journey, Donna's parents arranged to have a driver pick her up from the airport after her trip and take her back home. This arrangement was made to allow Donna to fully focus on Bailey and not have to worry about the two-hour drive. As they embarked on the journey home, the driver began a conversation with Donna. In his confession, the driver revealed that he had been hearing a voice in his head that kept saying bad things. However, more recently, he claimed that the voice was telling him to hurt people by setting up a car bomb. Donna was alarmed by this revelation and found herself questioning the driver's sanity. Furthermore, the driver disclosed that he had a penchant for older women. He also revealed that he would host raunchy parties and invite Donna to join him. These revelations further raised alarm bells for Donna as she became increasingly concerned about the man's intentions. As the drive continued, the driver's behavior became increasingly erratic. He frequently switched lanes and accelerated at unexpected moments. Speeding throughout the ride home, Donna's mind raced with thoughts of the driver's alarming revelations and unsettling behavior. She couldn't help but wonder if she should trust the man behind the wheel with her and Bailey's safety. The journey home became an even more nerve-wracking experience, with Donna constantly on guard and praying for a safe return home. When Donna got home with Bailey, she was relieved. However, the experience had left her shaken. She called her sister who offered her reassurance and told her to forget about the traumatic car ride. Despite the reassurance, Donna couldn't shake the feeling of unease. She began receiving strange phone calls and suspecting that the caller was the driver. 
Mark called the car company and filed a complaint. As a result, the driver, Roger Harrington, was suspended from his job. Mark had Donna write down what happened, ensuring they had documentation if needed. On August 29, 1996, Mark Winger placed a call to 911, frantically reporting that a man had entered his home and begun assaulting his wife, Donna. In his distressed state, Mark exclaimed that Donna's brains were scattered everywhere. He informed the dispatcher that he had shot the attacker in self-defense. Within minutes, the Springfield Police Department arrived at Donna and Mark Winger's residence. Upon entering through the front door, the officers observed two bodies lying on the floor. Although Donna was still alive, she barely clung to life. She had been brutally struck at least seven times in the head, causing severe injuries. Beside Donna's body, the officers discovered another man lying motionless. Upon closer examination, they found that the man had a faint pulse and had suffered two gunshot wounds to the head. Further investigation revealed that the man's driver's license identified him as Roger Harrington. As Donna and Roger Harrington were taken to the hospital by ambulance, the police arrived at the scene to investigate. Upon examining the area, they discovered a hammer covered in blood and a .45 caliber semi-automatic handgun. Furthermore, on the kitchen table, the police noticed a yellow coffee mug and a pack of cigarettes. Outside the victim's home, the police observed Roger Harrington's car parked in the opposite direction. Inside Roger's vehicle, the police discovered a note which read, Mark Winger, 4.30 p.m. The letter included Donna and Mark's address. A homicide detective arrived at the scene and met with Mark Winger in the master bedroom of his house. Mark was visibly upset and emotional, continuously asking who the attacker was. While the detective knew that the person responsible was Roger Harrington, he decided to withhold this information for the time being. Mark eventually calmed down enough to tell the detective what had happened. According to Mark, he was working out on his treadmill in the basement when he heard a loud commotion. Concerned, he went to investigate and saw something that seemed off. Mark peered into the master bedroom and discovered that their daughter Bailey was lying unattended on the bed. Bailey being alone raised his suspicions as he knew that his wife Donna would never leave their child unattended. Continuing his investigation, Mark heard noises coming from the direction of the kitchen. Determined to protect his family, Mark retrieved his gun from the nightstand and walked down the hallway. What he found was a terrifying sight, a strange man attacking Donna with a hammer. The man looked up, made eye contact with Mark, and continued striking Donna. Mark, in response, took matters into his own hands and shot the man in self-defense. Although the man fell backward after being shot, he managed to get back up. This movement caught Mark off guard, and he decided to take action once again. He fired another shot at the man. After the incident, Mark had a conversation with the detective in which he sought clarification on the identity of the man who had been beating Donna. The detective confirmed that the man was indeed Roger Harrington. Upon hearing the detective's confirmation, Mark expressed his shock and disbelief. He exclaimed, Oh my God, that's the man who had been harassing my wife! As the detective searched Mark and Donna's home, he discovered a note written by Donna describing her terrifying drive home from the airport with Roger Harrington. The detective was already familiar with Roger Harrington, who owned a trailer park in the town. Roger and his wife resided there and often encountered domestic disputes. It made sense to the detective that Roger, enraged after losing his job, would retaliate by returning to Donna and Mark's home and causing violence. The detective reasoned that Mark, in the face of danger, would ultimately have no choice but to shoot Roger in self-defense. After conducting a thorough examination of the scene of the crime and hearing Mark's explanation, the police concluded that the shooting was an act of self-defense. As a result, the case was closed and Mark was exonerated. After Donna's funeral, her mother and sister stayed behind in Illinois to help take care of her newborn baby, Bailey. During that time, they noticed Mark acting strangely. He was consuming excessive amounts of alcohol 
and immersing himself in violent and disturbing movies. Despite having recently undergone a traumatic event, by December 1995, Donna's family could no longer sustain the demands of traveling back and forth between their homes to assist Mark with caring for the baby. As a result, they proposed to Mark that he hire a nanny. Mark eventually agreed to the idea and hired a woman named Rebecca, who stood out due to her stunning appearance and kind demeanor. Rebecca was a tall blonde woman who exuded warmth and compassion. She eagerly took on the responsibility of caring for Bailey and promptly began removing all the items the infant required. Donna's family felt reassured by Rebecca's presence, knowing their baby was in good hands. After showing Rebecca the ropes, Donna's family decided to return home, content that Bailey was being well taken care of by Rebecca. Rebecca and baby Bailey formed a strong bond rather quickly. There were nights when Rebecca and Mark would stay up late, drinking wine and engaging in deep. On August 23, 2001, as the investigation into Donna's murder continued, the police conducted surveillance on Mark and Rebecca's home. However, Mark became suspicious and confronted the officers. He told them to leave him and his family alone and to stop following him. Meanwhile, as the police surveilled Mark's home, a grand jury meeting was deliberating. Little did he know that his fate would soon be sealed. A short while later, the grand jury indicted Mark for the murder of Roger and Donna. This indictment meant a formal charge against him, and a warrant was issued for his arrest. The police received word that Mark was at work and promptly made their way to the location. They called out Mark's name as they arrived, and he emerged from the building with his hands up. Mark realized that he had been caught and surrendered to the authorities. During this entire ordeal, Rebecca stood by her husband, Mark. She believed in his innocence and was determined to support him through this difficult time. Their daughter, Bailey, witnessed the events as they unfolded. However, as time went on, Rebecca's support for her husband waned as she began to see the truth. Mark's trial began in May 2002. The state sought to prove that Roger Harrington went to the Winger home for a meeting and not to commit murder. His attorney argued that Roger had a mental illness and had exhibited erratic behavior, raising doubts about his mental state and the possibility of committing murder. However, the state believed that Mark had lured Roger to the house for a meeting to address the issue. It was alleged that Roger willingly entered Mark's home, which explained why there was no forced entry. During the meeting, Mark fatally shot Roger in the head while Donna with their baby was in the bedroom. Donna heard the gunshot and ran out of the room, leaving her baby on the bed. When she came out, Mark started beating her with a hammer. When Mark thought Donna and Roger were dead, he called 911. During the call, Roger Harrington can be heard moaning in the background. Mark then informed the dispatcher that their baby was crying and he had to go promising to call them right back. However, no baby can be heard at the back end of the call. The state argued that Mark needed to ensure that Roger was truly dead, leading to the second shot being fired into his head. Mark was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to life without parole. Later, Mark was charged with first-degree murder for hire, as he was alleged to have plotted to kill Deanne Schultz and a childhood friend who refused to post bail for him. Mark, however, claimed that he was merely scheming in an imaginary murder for hire plot, stating that it was not intended to be taken too seriously. Despite Mark's claims, he was ultimately convicted of solicitation of murder and sentenced to an additional 35 years in prison. After Mark was convicted of double murder and was sentenced to serve time in prison, Rebecca and her children were forced to distance themselves from him in order to protect herself and her children. Rebecca decided to change their surname back to her maiden name, Simic. Rebecca believed that it could be beneficial for Bailey to meet Donna's family. She thought that they could provide her with valuable insights about Donna. One Memorial Day weekend, Bailey made the journey to Donna's hometown to meet the people who loved her. Bailey's encounter with Donna's family proved to be an eye-opening experience. She was amazed to see how much they still loved and cherished her, considering her a grandchild despite her absence. While Bailey was staying with Donna's family, 
it coincidentally happened to be her birthday. They decided to throw her a party to make up for all the birthdays she had missed over the years. The meeting with Donna's family had a profound impact on Bailey. It taught her about the power of love, the resilience of the human spirit, and the importance of family. Despite the distance that had been created through Mark's crimes, Donna's family's love for her remained strong. Bailey's birthday celebration also showcased the warmth and generosity of Donna's family as they made an effort to make up for the birthday she had missed. Subscribe for more chilling cases.